And the coolest thing is, we do the vast majority of this in 90 days. 90 days. The only piece that we don't have automated, actually it can, the shipping center, they could within that 90 oh, yes, day period. Yes. So this can literally become an automated business within 90 days. So let's talk about this as a process. If this were a 90 day process to go from here to here, how would that look for one of our members that are engaging? Mm -hmm. And let's say they're brand new in business. They've right. never had been in business before. Right. That first concern that they have is generally, I need to make some cash. Right. And I need a system that will make cash. So a proven system. Mm -hmm. So they need cash flow and a way to get it. And that's product sales. Right. And in having an ever ever increasing level of inventory so they see growth in growth their in cash it. flow. Right. So yes, they're starting off small. They start off with a few products, right. which they can do in that very first week of being in business. Open account on Amazon where they know we can they can sell products. There's customers ready to buy. They order those products and get some sent into Amazon and get some cash sales, some cash flow in their first couple of weeks. Yeah. Then they start to grow their inventory, which increases their cash flow. I want to really focus in on, as I have been on the phone and speaking with people who are looking to build income online, and they, they're they attracted to the e-commerce, so mm -hmm. I hear about Amazon, but what people are not clear on, and where I want to go into a deeper conversation of why we say this specific sourcing method is indeed a cash flow method where others simply are not at the same level of generating cash flow because there's higher levels of sophistication, much well, higher levels of risk as well. So sure. I'm going to talk about those because I know in speaking on the phone, mm -hmm. this is what I've seen. They're looking at private label. They're looking at wholesale sourcing, uh, maybe print on demand. There's There are a whole number of methods to source, which means to find products to sell on Amazon. Mm -hmm. People may not know that. This is the arbitrage method, and we are teaching online arbitrage. So I wanna make it really clear why we can so emphatically and clearly state, this is a cash flow model that someone, they, ship, they can find products quickly, ship them into Amazon, the profit turns. It's because of the high level of predict predictability because of the data. And we're looking for sales velocity, and we're mm -hmm. looking for rank as two, two main criteria, of course, profit being right there with that. And there's that scarcity element that is different than wholesale, excuse me, wholesale sourcing, where they can, people can buy and other people are using the same wholesaler, supplier. This is um, tapping into what you call scarcity of limited supply. It's the question is who's finding those limited supplies and responding to them quickly and getting them into the Amazon marketplace. Would you agree with that? Any other distinctions about that? Sure. Um, you know, limited supply just means that they're finding products that are uh, generally clearance products. And because there's a limited number of those clearance products, there can't be oversaturation. Right. Yeah. I think the main thing here with the product sales is that these are proven products. They're already selling. Right. They have that data. Exactly. Meaning they, we know how much of it sells. We know the price that it sells for, mm -hmm. and they're tapping into that. They don't have to manufacture new products. They're not right. selling things that are unproven. They don't have to find a market. They right. don't have to build a market. They don't have to find an audience or identify an audience. They don't have to write a listing either. They don't even have to write a listing. The listing exists, and you're riffing off an existing listing, and you're helping to to fulfill the supply of that proven hot winter product mm -hmm. that is going so fast 
that you get to step into that flow of money. All they're doing is feeding inventory into a proven sales funnel. Here. Right. Yeah. It's a that's a perfect way of putting it. It's a proven product sales funnel, and that is an Amazon listing. And we have your, we're going to get to it here, the evaluation sheet. But I just really want to make it clear, and we know this to be true because of our members. Just yesterday, mm -hmm. here as we're at our workshop now and reflecting after three days here, and I interviewed a gentleman last night. He put in this system in 90 days, and he hit a cash flow now of about 2000 a month in 90 days. That's pretty cool. Proven, and now with his fourth month, he doubled his sales. Actually, he's doubling his ROI as well each subsequent month. A month. Um, but that's why we say it is a cash flow. Now, private label isn't quite that way. Uh, the level of uh, um, measures that you have to take, you really have to make very high level calculations of that just by default have higher levels of risk. We don't say not to do it, but we gotta be clear on expectations. This eliminates that level of risk that our people are in cash flow very, very quickly. So I just really wanted people to be clear because there are different methods. This one is superior for that. And the cash flow capital requirements is practically nothing. It's It can just, be as low as you want it to yes, be. Yes, a few hundred dollars and you can get started yeah. and have cash flow and start increasing your inventory. Right. So that means that this becomes proven to you very, very quickly. Right, and you go, I call it proof of concept. It works. Yeah, as far as systems go, now systems are where you put something in place and it works again and again and again. Right. It's uh, repeatable, it's proven, it it's works. It's predictable. Predictable, thank mm -hmm. you. So these are the systems that you would implement in this business, this cash flow business of selling online arbitrage products, clearance related products mm -hmm. that you source online on Amazon. That first system is product sourcing. That's the products right. that you're selling. You've got to source <laughs> those products this? first. Right. It's pretty simple. We have the directions for them. But the main thing here that makes it proven is this evaluation sheet this evaluation spreadsheet because you can put in the product and the cost of that product, the information about that product, compare it to Amazon, the selling price, the sales rank, which is the popularity of that product. Right. You put those numbers into the evaluation sheet and it spits out a response that says, this is a good purchase or maybe not so good purchase. Right. Yep. So it gives you that certainty that you need that Oh, I'm buying the right products to resell on Amazon. Exactly. With assurance because you have, this is borne out, you're 11 plus year Amazon seller. Mm -hmm. You know really, really well the important data points. You built this spreadsheet. It represents thousands of hours I've of work. I've used it again and again and again for years in my own business. And it works in our members' businesses. It does. It doesn't matter whose business it is, it works. And, and this is where, again, hearkening back to other methods where I've seen where people, they go for their one hit wonder and there's no proof of concept yet. And they invest, I've heard it, very, very large sums of money for that one hit wonder. And you miss, miss that one hit wonder, you're in deep doo doo. You, you didn't even know from the get go if it even works for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, mm -hmm. The barrier to entry to get the proof that you have a sense of confidence about it happens very, very quickly. That whole thing about delayed gratification, because a, a, to take a product to private label is it, there's many, many, many steps. You know, probably well over 100 conceivably when you break it all down. But if you can get to that proof that it works for you, here's what we see: I got my first sale, and it happens quickly. They want more of it. It's just self-perpetuates very, very quickly. That's what I love about it. And it really helps take care of, as people maybe are transitioning, I wanna talk about this, having the business mindset. They came in just thinking this might be oh, some side money, you know? When they see how quickly this happens, they start to, wait a minute now. We had a doctor we interviewed this weekend, uh, all total side. Now the daughter's coming into business, now the husband is coming into business. We've got a full blown on business we can do here because she did it all on the side as an ER physician working 12 hour shifts. She cleared 28,000 in a matter of three months. It works. So that's what I love about this. And it's really, I want to underscore this. 
this works and they get that proof of concept and they just continue to use it. The excitement that you just mentioned from our members, especially if they've never owned a business before, they had those first few sales yes. and they say it works. Well, that's awesome for them. An experienced business owner, somebody that's been doing this for a while, can take a look at the whole and say, yeah, of course this is going to work because these are all the elements of a working business. These yes. are all the systems in place. Exactly. So it's really cool for our new members who have never owned a business before. They wouldn't know that. Right. They wouldn't know that this works. Right. But it's so easy to put this in place that they get immediate sales from this. And that, that excitement, as you mentioned, makes them want to systematize all of this to, to grow their business. How many people have gotten into a business opportunity and they got it maybe a couple of sales and they struggled at it and they said, I don't know that this is for me. Well, here they get a couple of sales and they say, wow, that was easy. I want to do more of that. I want to grow this. And then they have that impetus to move through and systematize all of this. And we'll go through this, uh, finish this checklist, but I, here I just interviewed a member yesterday who mm -hmm. hit the uh, about $2,000 profit per month in 90 days. And he said, the amazing thing is, you, he, and he's a, a full-time employee, never owned a business in his life. And he said, by default, you guys are just, you're, you developed me into an entrepreneur without me even realizing, as I am just following your steps, I'm becoming a business owner. His vision went so rapidly to, we'll get to this one in a moment, he's planning to build to sell this thing. And so he said, you, you just guys, naturally, by me doing this, I am becoming that business owner. Well, that's the way we set up our training at the e-commerce business school. We grow business owners. They come in saying, I just want a little bit of cash flow. And they walk out saying, wow, not only am I a business owner, but I have something here that I can hand down or I can sell or I can let run forever for me. And you spoke about this in front of the room. Their identity is going to change by virtue of this. You hear it by the language they use when they talk about what they're gonna do in the future. It starts to shift because they're starting to view the world a little bit differently and this activity they got in for an original reason and purpose yeah, yeah. begins to open up new vistas. And so it's really cool to see them. I love what you said, We're, and that's what I threw the e-commerce business school. Our end product, if you wanna call it, it's the people who shift and they can send it at the end of this, I am a business owner. I have created a system built business that can be sold and it's 100% transferable. Because they built a system, they've done it once, now they can do it again. Faster. This is just one sourcing model. Right. And there's many other sourcing models available to them. And these components, let's talk about these yeah, components because they're that. common to all sourcing models. Right. All product sales models have these same elements in here. Product sourcing, of course, that's obtaining the products. They have to evaluate those products to make sure that they're profitable, that they're going to sell in a fairly quick period of time. Once they've evaluated those products, Okay, now they have to obtain them. Yep. So that's the process of ordering those products. Right. Once they've ordered it, now they've got to receive those products. And there is a process to that to make sure that you've got what you ordered, that it's all arrived, that it's in the shape that you want it. Now we have a fulfillment center here, and that's Amazon. They're going to fulfill all those orders. That's the sales part. You have to prepare those products for fulfillment. And there's this very specific, very specific process for that. That's right. Getting those products ready to send into the Amazon warehouses. Right. They're fulfilled by Amazon warehouses for their Amazon Prime customers, those right. hungry buyers. Amazon is the fulfillment system. They ship for it our to members. the customers. Yeah. And there's no very, very, very little customer support on our end. They take care of that. People say, what about refunds? What about this? What about that? They take care of the vast majority. Very seldomly, you will get an email that, and you better darn well respond to it um, from a customer. But I call this uh, ease of burden. They do all the traffic. They do all the marketing. They do all the advertising. I mean, it's the, I call it the spoil me rotten model that they create for us as sellers. So we're at fulfillment. What else do we have here? Well, okay, 
fulfillment. That means Amazon is handling the sales of the product. We've got to manage those sales mm -hmm. and manage our inventory. Amazon has a system for that. They have software called Seller Central. We need to maintain our inventory, right. watch our sales, reorder products, exactly. all of that. And that's done through Amazon Seller Central. And of course, that's a system into itself. Right. And then this one, replenishment of products. You have a special affinity with that one, don't I you? I do. Uh, replenishment are consumable products. You think of toothpaste, toilet paper, paper towels, stuff that people are reordering on an ongoing basis. And again, I'm going to refer to the interview I just did last night, our brand new seller, 90 days out, 6,000 in sales. Our, our members typically get 32% profit, just want to mention, but they also can deepen those profits. That's a whole nother system on it, so mm -hmm. where some get 50 to 60 percent profit. So just those vari variances are there depending on the seller. All right, but replenishment, he got very excited because he said his VA, and he had three to begin with, and he was basically vetting them against each other and kind of, okay, that one's not holding up compared to the other two, and he kind of had that process of elimination. But he got very excited because he thought his sales were going to drop after Q4 was where he got after started. After Christmas. Yeah, and he's like, but Anna, it actually didn't happen because a number of my products were replenishables and he hadn't experienced this as a seller. He's brand new. He's like, and Anna, and then the reorders came in. And he got really excited about that because the work that that VA did once. once right up here, that work. That work paid off will pay off multiple times in terms of that that effort to find that product mm -hmm. so a smart amazon seller will look to as they look at the ratio of the type of products that they have in their inventory and i see this from our members reports i'm aiming for 40 percent that my products are in the replenishable category because it's a simply a simple matter of reordering so this is a big deal and i call this a point of leverage you're leveraging that work. So replenishment allows you to rinse and repeat. If you've ever heard that term before, rinse and repeat. That means you've already done this work once, as Ann mentioned. And so now with replenishment, you're just reordering yeah. and going through this process. Exactly. Rinse and repeat. And that creates more automation in the business. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're on to my favorite part. And I have stated in previous videos that I personally would not want to look at a future business that I would either want to work or buy if it doesn't have assets. Just mm -hmm. I don't want it. I want something that if I'm going to put in some sweat equity, it's something that I know for a fact I can turn around and sell or it could pass on for legacy. Now, this is a hard earned lesson, by the way. So, you know, I'm sharing it from past experience. We had, my husband and I have been in the automotive industry for 12 years, and with that one, I kind of put on the brakes, and I told my husband, no, I don't want to go with scale and have a team and this and that, because of the phase that we were in our married life raising children. But at, at least, and now I learned more through my years, real estate investment, et cetera, that this is a must. So I wanted, some folks may not be clear on this asset part, which by the way, a lot of this is referencing and in tied with Robert Kiyosaki's book, which was a real linchpin in my life relative to, we had already owned two businesses. Mm -hmm. When I was introduced to Robert Kiyosaki's book, the cash flow quadrant of being an E, so some people watching right now are in the E quadrant employee. The gentleman I interviewed yesterday was in the employee quadrant. S means, solopreneur, which is basically self-employed self -employed, glorified job. You and I, yes. we know what that is. Uh -huh. I created a job in my business for me, yes. which is called an owner reliant. If the owner doesn't show up, no Nothing business happens. That's no, right. No money. So that's the S. And in fact, here, instead of, let me do this. I'm doing this exercise so that you understand more fully the value of why should you look at an asset asset based business so if nothing else what we're doing here is we're helping you get further educated and setting up filters um intellectual filters i'm going to call them knowledge-based filters that is going to allow you to go out much more empowered and because i do see in the marketplace i've been 15 years i've been working with a lot i'm going to call them newbies they don't have these filters in place to they're kind of just rife for <laughs> 
not understanding what they're getting into. This is the e-commerce business school. We want people to understand and take an ownership of what you're getting into. All right, so that's how we're going through this. So anyways, cash flow quadrant E is you're an employee, okay? S is solopreneur, which is basically a glorified job. Sure, it's a business because it's an S core, an LLC or whatever in the government's eyes. But in Robert Kiyosaki's definition, a true B, his ultimate is teams and systems run your business for you and you can walk away for one month without you even needing to be there. That's his little litmus mm -hmm. test, if you will. So if you own a business right now, and there's, I don't know how many tens of millions of business owners in the US, but is, that, that is what he's saying. That is what a true B is, is you can walk away from it. All right, and then the last in the quadrant is, as you, and this is all transitional phase, but like our members here, they move into this quadrant in a 90 day sprint. Yes. And by default, just doing this, these steps, you become this. Now, I'm not saying in 90 days, you're ready to walk away from a, you know, a whole month. I'm not saying that, but you will have all these elements in place. This one will grow and be strengthened over time. As you phase into this, uh, it will, your P&L, for example, get to in a moment. And then he says, Kiyosaki, the ultimate is when you get to I, what are you gonna do with all that cash flow? One, quit your job perhaps, a help assist family members, etc. But now you can go, you know, I got this cash. Or maybe even sell it then. But there, there's cash here at the end of this thing, right? Now I want to invest. And oh, you got a whole other problem, a really good problem, because he says that is the purpose of a business. Never, he says, and, and I'm, some people stay here. There is a gal, she's a nurse practitioner, and she's, she loves her job, but she wants more freedom. That's the problem. That's the problem. They may love it, but they want freedom. And that was the clarion call that I heard this weekend. I want freedom. I want to call my own shots. I want to be able to skip a week of work if I want. I want to have my own freedom. So anyways, the business owner, and then you got the I. Yeah, so what are assets? Assets are things that you own and control and that have value in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And again, referring to Robert Kiyosaki, is it puts money into your pocket. So he says, your car, your car is not an asset. It's a money pit. It's depreciating in value. But the definition of a true asset, according to Kiyosaki, is it puts money in your pocket. Now, this is designed to be an automated income system. Did I just... Did that definition just fulfill an asset, putting money into your pocket, and in this case, on autopilot is that's what right. it is. That's right. So that's the, that's the Kiyosaki definition of an asset. When I look at my own business, uh, the best example for me is my email list has generated in excess of $20 million in sales from an email list that others, they want me to help promote their program because they're going to make a bunch, bunch of money through me. It's a money creation, creator. So it's an asset because you have this list of customers that know, like, and trust you, right. and you can advertise, promote to them, and they'll buy things, which Absolutely. produces profit. Absolutely. And there's some predictability to that, yes. isn't there? Yes. That is mm -hmm. a definite asset. A brand can be an asset. Yep. So in this case, as you go and build this, so this morning we interviewed one of our certified trainers who trained. She went through your training in your system. She's mm -hmm. now a trainer, and we interviewed her. She has a profitable PL. Some yes. may have a PL that's in negative. Hers is not in profitable or is in profitability. She quadrupled her, yes. her growth. She predicts she'll quadruple again this coming year. Her PL is nice. <laughs> Someone would look at that PL uh, mm -hmm. go, and she has a team. She could get a check today yes, if, she she wanted, if she wanted to. Mm -hmm. And that's about a, year, a year's time into this method for her. Mm -hmm. Inventory always is uh, an aspect of your P&L because it has value. It's capital, albeit it's capital that has to be realized upon point of sale, but nonetheless, it is an asset to your business. The systems are this. These are the systems that you initially, you need to own these and go through them, but you can offset them very quickly because initially you're the, you're the leader of you. I'm leading me. Mm -hmm. Then you hire someone and you're leading them but eventually you're gonna have a team leader. So that's the team, you hire them to man, to, to, to do, do the, systems. the systems, to yes. implement all this work, to right. handle all that work. You don't wanna do this, I mean, you may. 
<laughs> someone may, but my interview yesterday with the uh, gentleman who's been in 90 days, he went through it. He said, I, I don't really care for doing this activity. He said, in fact, I suck at it, is what he said. He said, but you know what I know to be true? I can hire an expert at a sixth of American wages, uh, our Candida, our trainer, uh, three to four dollars an hour is what she's paying. Mm -hmm. These people are very happy with that. Furthermore, they were experts when she hired them. They had already done this work working for someone else. She had to train them a little more into what she had for them, their expect her expectations, mm -hmm. which by the way, you're 100% in control of that. You set the parameters. Uh, I want XYZ level of profitability. I want to rank up thus and thus. They got to be in the 1% sales category, for example. You determine and set those parameters to get it to where you want it to be. And that staff member has to meet your parameters. That's their job. So these systems, you have them done and you even have the training to give the VA because we don't want it diluted, if you will, and become less effectual. It's from the master trainer and then they implement these systems for them and now you have a team. So then at first, when you hire your team, and we're talking about virtual assistants, uh, low overseas, low yeah. cost overseas labor, trained labor. Yes. You are the team leader. Right. Managing those team members. That's correct. As you build a system for managing them, then you can hire somebody and to go into that place of team leader. Which you have a team leader. Yes, I do. That's right. You're here today, and mm -hmm. you have been for the last four days training. Mm -hmm and your business is working with or without you. So you, you were first that team leader, and, and your team leader you've had, he's been a leader for about four or five years or so? Yeah, about five years. So pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Steady, faithful, ready, uh, high level of quality. Trusted. Trusted. Yes. yes. That's the best word there, trusted. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out before we got going here, it's transferable. Now that is really key because a lot of business models, especially Michael Gerber from Emits Revisited, talks about how most entrepreneurs get going as, well, I'm a great pie baker. Talk on, I'm gonna start a pie business. And you're the expert. And they're, they're not thinking to build a business that can be transferable. Many pie bakers, the expert pie maker, ends up right here and that's all they ever get to. It's just a glorified job. Mm -hmm. And the sad part about that is when something happens to the glorified pie baker, there goes the business. That's right. And they think they have a business. And yet right. when they want to retire, they're actually the business. And yeah. only the only way they're ever going to sell it is if another solopreneur. A pie baker comes in who comes says, in. I want to bake pies all day as, as the owner. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just say, for people who are investors, that does not meet the criteria. This checks all the box, and that's another challenge for a lot of people who don't understand the bigger aspect of growing a business to sell. It's got to check the box in advance before you put in the effort that a would-be investor would go, yep, that checks the box, that checks, you know, meets all the boxes because they don't want a glorified job. They want something as much as possible that can be an autopilot, and they also want to see that it's scalable. So perhaps we need to talk about that. Can this be scaled? Oh, yes, yes. So, um, this is the process here. It's a repeatable, predictable process that produces money. The more inventory you, that you flow yeah. into the system, the more uh, profit that you make. So it's a matter of adding more inventory into this. Right. But however, let's say you want to make a lateral shift. Not a totally different shift, just a lateral shift, and actually add that to your business. So we're talking about online arbitrage, mm -hmm. finding clearance products from online stores. Let's say that you'd also like to add wholesale products, wholesale source okay. products, which by the way, are the epitome of replenishables, yeah. that you can implement the wholesale source products into the same exact system. You right. have to change your evaluation of them a little bit. Right. So this product sourcing changes, that's the lateral shift, but the remainder, all of this remains the same. And then you increase your inventory and increase your sales. What I feel through this system, you have set the foundation that I, I liken it to. You're gonna mix this cement, you're gonna pour it in, lay down that foundation, you're gonna let it cure. Mm -hmm. 
and it's going to get firm, and you can bounce a basketball across this thing and shoot hoops. So what this does is you get the cash flow, like we talked mm -hmm. about. You get the systems, you get the assets, and as I was saying earlier, this is a very fast method, sourcing method, to cash flow. You were talking about making a lateral move, and earlier I was saying that private label, for example, it's just wrought with more risk. There's just no way around it. It, it just is. However, when you want to expand into, and the most natural segue from this is wholesale, you now have learned the, the essentials of what comprises a truly scalable, successful business. All the pillars are in place that make it solid. You built that solid foundation. That success rate now shifting into wholesale, shifting into print on demand, private label, goes way up because you have all these disciplines of a true business put into place, all step-by-step, step, can be done in a 90-day sprint. Just interviewed someone yesterday. So now what happens is you have infinite potential in the marketplace, and including Shopify, I didn't talk about that, another market uh, distribution channel. You have infinite potential. And let's say you're bringing in, I don't know, 100 grand through this, you're not sweating bricks about, you know, the angst that comes with private label and you got to turn and flip. You're, you're set. There's not this big, deep sweating in the brow because you've got this system going. In fact, it might be scaling because you're team leader. It gives you confidence. You clear your mind and you're going to follow the exact steps. They're just slightly different. This, um, having this in place buys you time. So, and by time, I mean, you know, the, all that time that you spend here working in your business. Yes. Now, as here, you get to work on your business, right. which means you get to refine systems, add more systems. That lateral shift, well, you have the time freedom to do that. And it can go very, so much faster now. Yes, so much faster. And I feel so good about that because I, it just makes for a more, essentially a more mature uh, business owner at that point to really do this and face it with a, a much higher level of confidence and that level of confidence because it gives the assuredness of past performance, success performance. That's right, right. So and you're going to enter in a different mindset. It increases the chances of success. I mean, private label, we're talking about private label sourcing, that model is fraught with failure. There's so many people that have entered into that and have failed. Yeah. And yet if you have all of this in place, your chances of succeeding with private label have oh, yeah. increased greatly. Yeah, Yes. absolutely. So um, you wanted to talk about the value of what we're doing yes. here. So we're talking about assets. Assets are transferable. If you want to cash out, mm -hmm. if you want to have an investor come into your business, well, what does this mean? What kind of value is in here? We have profit and loss, right? Mm -hmm. So businesses are worth the profit that they make. Right. If a business is going to profit $100,000 in a year's time, you could say, well, it's worth at least $100,000, mm -hmm. right? right? Inventory on the balance sheet is capital. That has its value. It's worth what, you, what it's going to sell for, right. so the yep. profit that comes from that. Now, these are the multipliers yeah. right here, the systems that are in place that you've built, because this means replicatable, that it's going to continue to work. So it's not only the profit that you're making right now and the, and the capital, your value extends in time beyond that. Right. A team, somebody that's going to operate this for you, to operate all those systems, means that you don't have to step into the business and work 40 hours a week. In fact, that's what investors want. They don't want to work in the business. Exactly. They want to invest money into the right. business. Yes. So having your, your proven P&L, capital, um, in inventory, you've got systems, team to implement those systems, and team leader to manage the team members and the systems. Well, businesses like this are paying off in what we call multiples, two and a half, three times. Because of the, the scale profit. potential, yeah, of the net profit. Mm -hmm. And I think of with an investor. Investors have money on hand. They want to have work harder for them. So when they see an investor, they go, oh, you got this all automated, it's doing this, and you mean all I have to do is a cash infusion, and I'm going to get XYZ return on this versus, and it's all in the P&L, mm -hmm. versus these other three options I've looked at, 
I'm in. Why? They want the fastest multiplier of their existing dollars. They're cash flush. These investors are, ca and there's a lot of them. We've had 10 years of solid growth in this country, in the US, and there are a lot of cash flow rich people from their investments having multiplied. It's just the way the economy has been the last year, year, 10 years, and so they're now wanting to make it grow even faster. This is a beautiful way to do that because they got, they got the wads of cash and we're hearing from some of our members, they don't yet have that and they have to grow it a little more slowly as they have to reinvest, you know, and all mm -hmm. that. But there's people who can waltz in, they got maybe half a million. That's right. They see the system and they go, all right, I'm just gonna build a builder. You need a bigger team because they have to do more sourcing and get that growth. And brick and mortar businesses, well, they're waning. E-commerce businesses, they're trending. That's right. They're coming up. Yes. And so e-commerce businesses are very attractive yes. to investors. In fact, they're lined up and waiting. They are lined up and waiting. The, we know that for sure. Mm -hmm. They're waiting. Please build it and I'll buy it. There are hungry lists or lists of hungry exactly. investors that want to buy e-commerce businesses and Amazon businesses are right up at the top of that. It's kind of like, you build it, I'll buy it. That's what they're thinking because mm -hmm. they've got a pile of money. And that's totally optional to what that person wants to do. But I know the individual I just interviewed last night, he's doing it to sell. So, and some don't know right at the get-go, that's fine. What is important is knowing, are these filters in place that bring you the effort? Because you go with a different effort, and you go, man, all I did was work. I can't even sell this thing. Ooh, ouch. So that's why I love this method. And what I want to do is offer people the opportunity to get more information. We'll explain about the model. They can go mm -hmm. to joinebs.com. You'll see success stories there, and you'll also be able to have the opportunity to consume some of our free training information that breaks down how this works. And then we accept applicants into, we, we mentor them to success, but we really want the folks who, they get it, and they're willing to work this to get that. That's what we want. Awesome. Come so, join us. Regardless of that big dream, you've got to build a foundation. You have to have a business that has cash flow. Do you need more cash? Go out and source some more. Shove those products into Amazon. What's going to spit out the other end is profit. It's that simple, isn't it? Then we start looking at it as this really is a system. So how can I add more to my system? How can I start to scale this? That's why this is so integral, each pillar leading up sequentially to that long-term reliable business. These are the real assets then that somebody who wants to buy a business, this is what they look for. This is the brand launcher, the career launcher, the income launcher. It's a beautiful thing. How many of you are interested in selling your business? Build it to sell, make a profit. They can learn and master this skill and then turn around and do it multiple times over. Yes, you can make a million dollars just selling on Amazon alone.